So, Buddy, tell us a little bit about what you were doing that night leading up to the events of uh, seeing the Kelly Thomas incident. Um, normally, my daughter and I, we go to the slide bar, and it's Taco Tuesday, and that's like our little thing of bonding. Well, she didn't come because she was too tired. And so I went ahead and I went, and uh, I remember the cops pulling up early, earlier. I, I got there at 6, because that's what time Taco yeah, Tuesday six. starts. So I think it was maybe an hour and a half, maybe later, and I saw just a couple of cop cars. I didn't think anything of it. And then later on that night, there was a flood of cop cars coming in. A flood. There were so many cops there. And then you had the fire department, you had the ambulance. I go, I want to know what's going on. So I just left the, um, I left the slide bar, went down where the memorial is, and I saw Kelly Thomas dead. I, I swear he was dead. He was a gray pale, or he just basically lost a lot of blood. You couldn't see his face. His hair and his body were laying in a pool of blood about this deep, and it was about that big. And they put him on his side, you know. And then I went back, and I came back, and I wanted to videotape him, you know, see what I can videotape. Well, there was an officer there saying, get behind the, the sidewalk, get behind the sidewalk. So I didn't have the opportunity to video too much. But just, you know, you could see the officers in the background. Unfortunately, my phone got stolen off the bus when I went to the beach, and that was on July 25th. So I no longer have that video. Um, after I took the video, I went and I got my 35 millimeter camera. And uh, so that was probably around, I think it was around 9-ish or 9.30. And I started taking pictures. Well, the first few I took, the flash didn't go, but I used up the film. So I put in a new roll of film. I just started going around taking pictures. It'll show on the video, pictures being taken. And then um, this officer came over and he asked me, where's my ID? And I told him, I don't have one. And he asked me several times, where's your ID? I don't have one. I don't have one. Then he says, well, now you're involved. And I go, I, I still can't figure it out. He goes, now you're involved. I'm just looking at him. He goes, now you're involved. What are you going to do? You know, and then um, it's hard for me to remember everything, but he intimidated me so bad that I thought he was going to take me to jail. I didn't know I had a right to keep my film. So he intimidated me so much that I just kind of like broke down. And then I opened up the camera and I handed it to him because I thought I was going to be put away. I thought I was going to go to jail or they were going to give me a citation for taking pictures. And um, it just, he just basically intimidated me. And I finally Did he went. ask you for the film? Nope, he just was on me. On me and on me and my, you're involved now, what are you going to do with it? What you, you know, it's a, that's basically the member I can remember. You're involved now, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're involved now, what are you going to do with that film? You know, and just kept going on and on and on. It just wouldn't let up on me at all. And when the DA interviewed me, I told him the same thing. He, they intimidated me. I thought I was going to go to jail. The way he was talking to me. And the DA said that they heard his, you know, they record you. They heard the recording of us talking. And he said, you handed over the film. I said, absolutely. He intimidated me. I thought I was going to go to jail. I wasn't too sure what was going to happen. I didn't know my rights. But he just would not let up on me. So, so um, let's go back a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> you tried, you videoed some stuff and and then you stopped and then you went back to your car to get your camera? My friend's car. And and why did you have a camera with you that night? I always carry a camera with me. Okay. Always. In any event, I just have it. I just bring it with me. And a 35, you like a, film cameras. Right. It's a 35 millimeter and when the officer said, is that a digital camera? I said, no, it's a 35 millimeter with a tele lens, telephoto lens. He just goes, this he's just like, dropped. And he just looked at me and I just looked back at him. Like, you know. So, um, when you got the camera, mm -hmm. you, you know, in proximity to where Kelly was, how close did you walk with your camera? I went up to where um, they had the caution tape, which is like probably halfway there, you know. How many feet from Kelly? Oh, uh, I, I was, they already taken Kelly. They already oh, Kelly was gone. He, they already taken, after I saw him laying there dead, and when I went and I took the video, and yeah. when I went to go get the camera, I believe he was already he was already okay, gone. Okay, so you were just going to take pictures of the scene. Yes, and one of the scenes that I wanted to take a picture of, there was so much blood that you can see the reflection of the moon, and I was getting that perfectly, where the blood was and how it was reflecting on the lights, you know, the um, the lamps and the um, the moon. You could see it. There was a reflection. It was so deep of so everything. At some point, when you first began taking pictures, 
Did you have a few minutes when you were left alone? Oh, I was left alone until this cop just walked right up to me. How, how long did you get to take pictures? I got about almost 25 pictures. So he walked up to you and so you're, right, where were you standing when he walked up to you? I was standing, um, you could see it was not on the, the, it was like not on the ledge part, but I made sure I got kind of closer to the caution tape because you could see the blood. And I wanted to make sure I got that. And I got a couple of, you know, some cops or officers also. But one of my, you know, I just want them to know how much blood was on that driveway. How long, how many seconds or minutes was the officer speaking to you? I said it went on about, I would say, um, I'm trying to remember, maybe about 15 minutes, maybe. He was just going, you know, now that you're part of this, you know, and what are you going to do with it now you're... Um, he just kept going. Now, what is he, he trying to? He just said, um, "Now you're involved in this case," and I'm just going, "What? You're involved in this case? What are you going to do? What are you going to do?" And he just kind of badgered me and just was on you. So, um, at what moment and what did the officer say that that caused you to make the decision to open up the back of that camera and take the film out? He kept saying, "You're." Now you're involved in it. What are you going to do? That's the only thing I can really remember. What are you going to do? You're involved in this. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? And he kept going on and on and on. And I really have a hard time remembering because I have a certain condition. But he kept going on and on and on. At some point, you just decided it was in your best interest to open the back of that camera. And, and are, did you intentionally pull the film out of it, or did that accidentally happen? No, because it goes, it goes in a roll, and you marry it over to and one it part, rolls and it automatically lo rolls. And then, because um, what it does is that it unrolls, and then as you take pictures, yeah. it rolls back up. So, you know, remembering the old 35 millimeters, you got to push a button and unwind it back to get it back into the, when you're done. When it, it does it automatically. It does it automatically. Yeah. So it, you knew you were ruining the film. Well, yeah, I couldn't do anything about it. Right. And when I pulled it out, because he just made me feel like I was going to get in trouble. I thought I was going to go to jail. What did you do with the film when you pulled it out? I handed it to him. Did he take it? Yes. Did he? Then what did he do? I don't know. Did he, just, did he say anything? Nope. Did he, he did. stay there? Did he walk away? We had a little bit of a conversation after that. and then Did he become it. nice at that point? Yes. <laughs> so Absolutely. at the point the film... At the point the film was ruined, he became nice. Yes. Yeah, he was nice to me. He became absolutely... <laughs> Did he see, do you think he felt bad? No. Yeah. Heck no. Okay. He didn't feel bad at all. Can he you said, describe him? All I know is that he's a, he's he's basically... I know he's tall. Um, I think he's a little chubby. I, I'm trying to think if he had hair or not. It was kind of hard to tell because it was at night. But the DA knows who he is. And they call him officer, and I don't remember what they call him, but the DA knew who he is. And that's why they called me when I was in, interviewed by him. Oh, yeah, officer, you know, we already heard the tape on it. And I'm just going, great. Did, um, so the DA interviewed you? Yes. Did he come to Fullerton, or did you go to his office? No, or? he asked where he can interview me at, and I met him over at Starbucks on Orange Thorpe and Brookers. I didn't want him around my house. Okay.